All right, our regular viewers might recall a story we covered in July about possible alien technology found by Harvard researchers pulled from an interstellar meteor that crashed into the Pacific Ocean in 2014. I spoke with lead researcher Avi Loeb about the spherical fragments that he thought could be technological in nature. Take a listen. The point is that this meteor looked different than space rocks that we are familiar with. It's sort of like going to your backyard and among the rocks that are familiar to you, you see a tennis ball that may have been thrown by a neighbor. And you need to figure it out first, so that's why we are doing this analysis. There is a chance that it's technological in origin. We have to explore it and figure it out. And back now to talk about the results of that analysis is Harvard professor Avi Loeb. Avi, thank you so much for joining us again. It is great to see you. So you were saying there that there is a chance. Uh, so what have you learned so far about these spheres since the last time we spoke? Well, thanks for having me. We analyzed the, those spheres. They are tiny, the size of a grain of sand. They're roughly a milligram each. And uh, we put them in a mass uh, spectrometer to figure out their composition. And we found that uh, they have a very strange composition. Uh, those excess spherules that were found near the meteor path. Of course, there is always background far away from the meteor path, as well as uh, uh, on the meteor path, in addition to what came from that meteor. But we were able to find a unique type of uh, these spheres uh, just around the meteor path, not anywhere else. And those had the concentration of elements that cannot be found anywhere. In fact, they were never uh, uh, studied or seen previously because we studied only solar system rocks. And we demonstrated that these uh, unique spheres have compositions that are having elements like beryllium, uh, lanthanum, uranium, that are hundreds to a thousand times more abundant in these spherules than uh, typically in the solar system. So we can demonstrate with uh, confidence that the material making those molten droplets from the surface of the object did not originate in the solar system, not from Earth, not from the Moon, not from Mars, not from asteroids that are known to us. So Avi, what do you think they are? Do you think that this would be alien technology? Well, that's a possibility. There is also a possibility that they came from a planet very different than the ones we see in the solar system, perhaps a planet with a magma ocean uh, that has an iron core, uh, but it has to be different than the Earth, the Moon, or um, Mars. Another possibility is that they came from uh, the ejecta from an exploding star. And uh, for that to be the case, uh, you need several different contaminants to create the abundance pattern that we see. So that also uh, is quite challenging. And finally, as you mentioned at the beginning, it could be that these elements were put together for some technological purpose. And one way to figure it out is just like making a cake. Now we have the ingredients. We can put them together in a laboratory and see what we get. All right. So what would the next step be in this process in terms of where research goes? Is this something that you want to have confirmed by either the government or like another independent research team? What happens next? Well, we will continue to analyze those uh, tiny spheres that we have. But of course, the key would be to find bigger pieces of the object. Now we know where to look. So we are starting to plan the next expedition. And of course, if we find a bigger piece, it would be easy to tell the difference between a rock that came from outer space far away or a technological gadget that may have buttons on it. And of course, if we do find a gadget with buttons on it, the question is, should we press a button? <laughs> I know that you definitely like to talk about that, but I think I'm going to ask this question just for all of the alien enthusiasts out there because they want to know if this means that aliens exist. And if they do exist, then why don't we have more definitive evidence that they do? Well, uh, so uh, there are two types of uh, objects, technological objects you can find in space. One is space trash of the type of the 
probes that we sent out of the solar system, like Voyager, Pioneer, New Horizons. Once they exit the solar system, they will not be functional anymore. And at that point, they will be trashed and they can collide with another planet like the Earth and appear as a meteor, the way we saw this object. Uh, the second type is functional devices. That These might be much more rare. So, you know, the uh, you can think of the space trash as just like plastics in the ocean. They keep accumulating over time, and every now and then, uh, one of those pieces comes to your neighborhood. Uh, and still, even though it's not functional, it gives us evidence that there is a technological civilization out there, a sender uh, from where this came. And that would obviously change our view about our place in the universe. If we have a neighbor, uh, it might inspire us to do better uh, and to explore space. So, Avi, not everybody has been on board with your theories. There are scientists out there who are critical of what you've had to say. What do you have to say to them right now? That I'm following the scientific method of collecting materials, studying them in the laboratory, and writing scientific papers about them. That's the way science works. Uh, it, it doesn't uh, uh, advance our knowledge if people, if the scientists were to make critical comments and sit on their chairs. That doesn't advance any new knowledge. Those people are basically expressing their skepticism based on past knowledge. I'm trying to recover new knowledge because this question is extremely important and the implications for humanity are discussed in my book that just came out this week. Uh, it's called The Interstellar, you can see it here. Um, and in it, I explain why this subject is so important that scientists need to be engaged in it. And all these skeptics are basically unwilling to be engaged in seeking the evidence. All right, quickly before I let you go, Avi, is alien life out there, yes or no? Yes, I think it's arrogant to think that we are alone and that Albert Einstein was the smartest scientist that ever lived since the Big Bang. <laughs> Harvard professor Avi Loeb, our friend and resident alien expert, always good to see you. We'll be right back.